Good morning. Welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from Arise Now. CA. Yes, well, we are delighted to be with you here once again on a Sunday morning and look forward to spending these next uh, few moments with you, whether you're watching here on a Sunday morning or some other time through the week. Anytime. Yeah, anytime that's the is good. Of uh, the recordings on Facebook and YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, they're, the Rise they're now available YouTube. ongoing. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, thank you for checking us out. And uh, whether you're a regular or a first timer, we welcome you and pray God's blessing on you. Right. Well, we have been doing a study on Consider This the last number of weeks. And I think we're bringing it to a close today. Yeah. I think so. That's the plan. This is number seven. And uh, we're going to be looking at one more verse where the word consider is. And the whole idea behind this is that uh, when you see the word consider uh, in scripture uh, or words like that, like behold or count or look or, you know, these are things that we should think about. Right. And so the whole uh, idea behind this series is that it would help us in our thought life that these are things that we should consistently think about right and they will help uh, shape the people we become and hopefully it builds our faith and and our character and uh, we become more and more like jesus each and every day right so if you've missed any of these weeks you can certainly go back uh, might be easiest on our rise now youtube to find them they will go into a playlist the consider this playlist um after today yeah and um so you could They'd all be there. Yeah, use it for Bible study, for your personal study, or for groups. That's yeah. right. And so today we are going to look at the last verse that we've uh, selected to consider. And that comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Okay. And so we're just going to read that one verse. And then we're going, to, we're going to look at some other verses in Romans 6 as we go through. But we're just going to start with that one. Romans 6, 11. Mm-hmm. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Yeah, so in the NIV, which you just read, mm -hmm. it says count yourselves. Some yeah. translations uh, will say consider. Right. And I think it's the, I kind of like the King James on this one. It says reckon. <laughs> reckon. Uh, in this same way, reckon yourselves dead to sin mm -hmm. so but alive to god in christ jesus and so we want to talk about and we we touched on this a bit earlier in the year angie when we were in the start of this year uh we said that our word for the year is freedom freedom and we spent um a little while going through some different parts of freedom and uh and so we did look at this a little bit then but we want to elaborate on it a bit more today and, uh, and so we want to count, we want to consider, we want to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And so what does that mean, that we're dead to sin? Uh, and, and so hopefully, if you're not quite sure that as we spend these next few minutes together, um, that you will, will gain some understanding. And, uh, you know, we're still, we're still learning and growing on all of this uh, ourselves, right? But I want to just say... Um, that it, it's not normal as a follower of Jesus, we should be thinking in this way that it's not normal for us to sin or we shouldn't live with the expectation that we're going to sin, right? right? Because We should make better choices as we move forward and we should be set free from that power of sin. Well, but yeah, but the power of sin has been broken right. through Jesus' death on the cross. Right, and we need to realize that. I remember uh, years ago, I I read this book that was called um, "The Normal Christian Life" by Watchman Nee, and to summarize kind of the book in in a sentence or two was that he was saying that the normal Christian life is is that we are free from sin, and he says most Christians are trying to get into a room that they're already in, right? Because we're we're we're. Ugh. That was a bunch of stuttering, wasn't it? <laughs> because we're, we're, we're focused on the fact that we, we want to be free from sin and we want to stop sinning. Right. But then we, we need to realize that Jesus' death on the cross has actually broken the power of sin right. over our lives. And so, so that's why it's so important 
that we realize what the scripture teaches and that we it transforms the way that we think. So one of the things that we did early in the year when we were talking about freedom is we told this story about a turkey and uh, and the baby eagle. And the eagle. Right? And the baby eagle had fallen out of the eagle's nest, landed in a flock of turkeys and uh, was raised by turkeys. And, uh, and, and so the story was told originally by a guy named Jamie Buckingham, mm -hmm. who used this as an analogy to, to talk about the way that, uh, the, the theology that we as Christians have, and whether it's turkey theology or eagle theology, right? Right, and we yeah. used this in, um, before Christmas when we did, was it the Gift of Righteousness? Serious? Or was it then? Or, well, anyway, it was recently. I thought it was in the beginning of this year when we were talking about freedom. But it might have been in the gift of righteousness. Uh, I, I, it was well. It was recently. Anyway, we don't have to. I think it was before. Christmas, uh, you're, you're, you're probably right. I'm not going <laughs> to uh, debate you on that one. <laughs> but isn't it that we did the gift of righteousness before? Yeah, we did Christmas? that before Christmas. Yes. So, but anyway, so these turkey gobble gobble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Don't distract me right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the the eagle, the little eagle that fell amongst turkeys, was raised by turkeys, and and just thought that this was his life, right? That he was just to be walking around on the ground with his head down, looking for food on the on you know on the on the earth, and and uh, and but inside he knew there was more. He was longing for more until one day he he looked up and he saw an eagle flying, and and he was just like, oh, something rose up within him and thought like that's who i'm created to be mm -hmm. right and so so our theology what we believe and what we think is so important right mm -hmm. uh, because we can have this idea that well you know what it's just normal for us to sin but we can't read the new testament and come up with that theology mm -hmm. because they they there's so many places in paul's writings and and in in other writings uh in john's writings in the in the new testament um, that talk about how that we are free from sin and that we should not go on sinning, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so, so we want to consider ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So uh, can you read um, verses 6 and 7 in Romans 6? 6? 6 and 7. Yeah. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Right, and, and a wee bit earlier than that, they talk about how that, uh, that when Jesus, was, Jesus died, we died with him, right? And then when he was raised, we were raised with him. Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, I think in one or two verses earlier, it says, if we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I like how he says that our old self, the sinful nature, the old man, sometimes it's referred to, uh, it was, that was crucified with, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was put to death. Uh, and, and, and so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, and some other translations I say it this way, so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless. I like that version or that, that wording, right? So that we realize that the, the body of sin, the sinful nature within us is died and it's done away with, it's rendered powerless. So we do not need to be slaves to sin anymore. There is freedom for us, right? And it needs to change in our thinking, in our belief systems, and that we don't get up every day expecting that we're going to sin, mm -hmm. that we are going to walk, uh, you know, before God each day um, in purity and in holiness. Now, that being said, there are times when we do sin, and, and then we're surprised. We should be surprised that we sin, sinned, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I, I sinned. I'm, I'm going to make a better choice next time because I am free from sin. Right? right? John, Jesus said in John uh, 8.32, whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. And that freedom is complete to walk in freedom with him, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a working out of this process in us, right? So immediately when we come to Jesus... When we submit our lives to him, when we say, 
God, I need you. I, I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me. And then Jesus comes by the power of his Holy Spirit and lives within us. The old person that we, we were is now died because that person has been put to death with Jesus on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. And now we are alive to God in Christ Jesus. And so then there's this working out of this. It's what Paul refers to in Philippians chapter two, I think it's verse 12 or 13, where he says, I want you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then I love how it goes on in that verse and it says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Right, so it's God who is at work in your heart and in mine to will and to, 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 so that we will and will act according to his good purpose. Yes. And so that is the, the working out of this process that happens when we come to Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and so it, it's, um, you know, the picture of our baptism, right? Um, you and I were baptized with, uh, in the Mennonite church where we were, um, where the water was poured on our heads, right? Um, but we really like the symbolism in the immersion style of baptism, which is maybe, um, well, in a lot of traditions, is, is much more common. Where you get dunked. Yeah. Well, I, 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 well, first off, I was baptized as a baby. Yeah. Um, and then I, I made a decision for Jesus later and um, was baptized in the Mennonite church. And I really wanted to be dunked, but we weren't doing family camping that year. You wanted to be immersed immersed so but the symbolism yeah. of of the immersion baptism yeah. is is that the the water is like a grave right mm -hmm. and we we are going down into the water and and we leave the old person the old man the sinful uh, the old self which is in that uh, romans 6 verse 6 mm -hmm. for we know that our old self was crucified with him so we we are we've been crucified with jesus and then we're raised to new life so we come up out of the water and we, it's symbolizing the new life that we now have in Jesus, right. right? And so that's why Paul can say in this same way, consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So maybe Angie, now do you wanna read verses eight, nine, and 10 of Romans six? Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Yeah, so the death that Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. It's been done. Nothing more needs to be done for you and I to walk in complete freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus has paid the price. He didn't, he didn't uh, miss anything. Um, I think uh, I did a verse in a prayer recently and sometime within the last week from Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 it says therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them and I love that Angie how it says save completely uh, because sometimes we think oh well he can probably save part of us but there's some of us that's too far gone and but he's like no I can save you completely. And, and everything that is needed for that to happen has been done. You know, God didn't miss something in, in this whole process of uh, sending his son to earth to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. God knew exactly what he was doing and, and it was for complete salvation uh, for each one of us that choose to accept that by faith. And so, uh, so we want to speak these words of encouragement to you so that it transforms the way that we think and so that when we get up each day, we consider this, that we are dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And so it, it, it just is, um, it's so foundational for, have a, for us to have this understanding and it transforms the way then that we approach each day. Right. Uh, and we can walk in freedom because... The death he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then uh, Paul goes on in the next verse after verse 11, where he says, you know, in the same way, consider, reckon, count yourselves dead to sin, uh, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And then do you want to read the, the rest of that paragraph? I think it's 11, uh, 12, 13, and maybe 14. 
Uh, okay. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. Yeah, I like that in verse 12 where he says, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. So that indicates to us that we have a choice. Uh, so we have been set free from sin. We are dead to it, mm -hmm. but we can still let it give it power in our lives. And it's because of the choices that we make. Right. Right. I think I like the part where he says, don't offer parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness. So he's talking about, you know, our body, our, yeah. our hands. Don't, don't let your hands sin. Your feet, don't let your feet go into places that you're going to sin, or don't let your feet sin. Or your eyes, don't let your eyes sin. Or your mouth, don't offer up your mouth to, uh, to join with wickedness and the things that you speak, right? Mm -hmm. Watch out with your ears, what you're going to listen to. How's that going to shape you, right? Like, oh, your elbows. Oh, 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 what can you do with your elbows that would be offering itself for, for wickedness? Oh, dear. You know, like, Give it some thought. I'm going to have to think of that the next time you give me a little elbow. Like, <laughs> is was that, that sin was, or is that righteousness? Was, was that as an instrument of wickedness or an instrument of righteousness? <laughs> uh, I just, you know, yeah, like, I mean, good. we don't often, we read it, but what does it mean? Yeah. How does that practically work out? Yeah. Right? That's, and that's so it's good. like, what words are we going to speak? Yeah. Are they going to be words of righteousness or are they going to be words of wickedness? And I mean, we sometimes want to just gloss that all over. Well, that wasn't as bad as what we thought it was. Or, um, But let's get real with the Lord about mm -hmm. this. Because yeah. we don't want to offer ourselves to that end. Right. And if Jesus conquered the sin, he's conquered it for us. Right. That we don't have to live that way yeah. anymore. Because I, that the, the verse that it talked about um, before where it says, the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Well, what is that? It's a resurrected life. Mm -hmm. He raised, was risen from the dead, and he lives a resurrected life. And we are called to live a resurrected life, too. We're called to die to sin, to live for God, and that is a resurrected life filled with the resurrection power that rose Jesus from the dead. Yeah, and you know, Angie, that's just so good, and it's so good to, to get the teaching of the scripture into our mindset and that our our theology the way that we think the way that we we function each day is shaped by what the scripture teaches us because otherwise we can develop this idea that oh well you know i'm it's it's okay to struggle with these things mm -hmm. right because it's it's normal mm -hmm. uh, nobody's perfect you know we say and and nobody is perfect right only jesus was mm -hmm. but jesus died to sin once and for all so that you and I are dead to sin mm -hmm. and then we're learning to walk in new ways, right? Right. And I think when we sin, it's a, ch it's a choice to sin, mm -hmm. especially when we recognize this, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes if we're, we're caught in a moment and we've had patterns previous or whatever, we don't recognize that, hey, you can actually be free. Yeah. It's just like, don't let that overcome you where you feel like, oh, I can't. I can't break free or I can't be free because technically we are. We just need to live in a way that's in alignment to that. Yeah, and learn to walk in those ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about managing the sinful nature. It's about putting it to death, mm -hmm. right? And realizing that it's dead. And I love this verse that Paul says in uh, Galatians 5 verse 24. Uh, he says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So the flesh is uh, is synonymous with the word, uh, the, what we call the sinful nature, right? Yeah, the carnal some, nature. Yeah, some, some of the different translations use different words there. But realizing that as we belong to Jesus, that old nature has been put to death, right? Mm -hmm. And if something is dead, it's dead. It has no, no power over us anymore, right? And mm -hmm. so we can walk in freedom. You can walk in freedom today because of what Jesus has done for
for you on the cross. Uh, and the power of sin is broken in your life and you can walk in new ways. And so, so sometimes though, when we, when we have um, partnered with the enemy and his plans, uh, we have given you know, the demonic uh, realm access to our lives and there can be uh, demonic oppression uh, that happens in our lives and there needs to be uh, a breaking of that and, a, and, and just a, a getting rid of those evil forces that we've partnered with. And how does that happen? Well, the first and the most important thing is by making new choices, that we're gonna walk in a new way and we're gonna say no to the devil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I pray regularly is, I renounce you, Satan, and all your works in Jesus' name. And that's often something that when we are baptized, we, we say something similar to that. Right. It's oh. a good uh, thing it's in baptism. It's a breaking, a breaking agreement. It's like we're coming out of one kingdom and we're going into another kingdom. Right. And then realizing there's sometimes that I, I still have made bad choices. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not going to go down that road any further. Uh, and whatever the action was. So I renounce you, Satan, and all your works in Jesus' name. And then I add this. And I reclaim any ground that I have given in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, and so then we're just back on track, right? Mm -hmm. and it, but it's, again, this how that we think, right? It's not normal for us to sin. It's not that we want to expect to sin, mm -hmm. right? That is the, the turkey way of thinking, right? And we want to soar like the eagles, right? We don't want to be just walking around on the ground, you know, with our heads down on the ground going gobble, gobble, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we want the eagle is majestic and is soaring and just like, you know, um, has this beautiful view that the Lord has given them because of the way he's created them. And that's who we are created to be. Mm -hmm. You know, Isaiah talks about that, that if we wait on the Lord, we will mount up as on, on wings like eagles, right? We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. I think that's Isaiah 41, possibly, or 40, somewhere in there. I forget the exact reference, but that's the life that you and I are called to as, as followers of Jesus. And one other verse, just to highlight in this, is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Um, do you want to read that? Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. And I would encourage you, this is a really, these two verses are really good verses to memorize and to meditate on regularly because it helps to transform our thinking. Because one of the tools that the enemy comes at us with is condemnation. Mm -hmm. Oh, look what you have done. Oh, that's really bad. And you're a bad person and on and on, you know, the, the condemnation goes. And then we need to realize that when we are in Christ Jesus, Yes, when we, we will fail at times, there's gonna be times that that is gonna happen, um, but we can be forgiven, right? We come and we confess it and we, we leave that behind and then we move on not expecting to do it again, right? And, and so there is no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, there's a law that we are under now with the spirit of life. It set us free from the law of sin and death which the law just proved to the people how much they sinned and that they couldn't do it. They couldn't keep it on their own, right? Mm -hmm. And so that law of sin and death was broken through Jesus and we are now under the law of the spirit of life. So in this same way, consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, you wanna lead us in a prayer? to wrap this up today, Angie? Sure. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the work that Jesus did on the cross, mm -hmm. how he did away with sin on the cross, how, how he rose again to newness of life through your resurrection power. And Father, I thank you that when we come to Jesus and we believe on him, we can have a relationship with you and we can put sin to death in our own lives because of what Jesus has done. And we can live through the power of your spirit, a resurrected life where sin has no power over mm -hmm. us. 
And so we thank you for that. Today, Father, we want to repent where we have not walked in this way. And so we just confess those things to you. And I just ask if you're, if there's anything that's coming to mind, that you just speak them out to the Lord right now. Mm. And I thank you, Lord, that your word tells us in 1 John that if we confess our sins, you're righteous and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Lord, I thank you for your cleansing power that is working in us today. And Father, today and tomorrow, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would resensitize us where we cross those lines so that we would endeavor in our hearts to please you in every area of life. So we offer up ourselves afresh and anew to you today to live in a way that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us. We pray God's blessing on you. And until we meet again, stay awake and stay alert. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up, follow and subscribe. Arise Now and Paul and Angie Wagler are part of the E3 Canada family. Consider partnering with us through prayer and financial support to touch more people with the powerful message of God's love, hope, and transforming power. You can find us at arisenow.ca.